What's up guys, this is Alan and in today's episode I'm going to be showing you everything that you need to know in order to grow your own grape vines. Can you grow in a pot? Can you grow in the ground? How do you water it? How do you fertilize it? How to get the most fruits? What are the main problems that you're going to encounter when growing a grapevine? And towards the end of the video, I'm also going to be giving you my own personal growing tips from growing this plant for the past few years. So if you want to be successful growing your own grapes, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so this is our grapevine that we have in the ground. It has been in the ground for a few years now. And as you can see, it's fully loaded with grapes everywhere. Grape season is coming up, temperatures are warming up, so they are getting ready to ripen. This one specifically right here that's encasing my entire chicken coop and growing into my shed right here is called a blueberry grape uh, vine. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with growing requirements. Sun requirements, grapes require full sun anywhere in the United States. It's, if it takes full sun here in the desert, it will definitely take full sun in your area. Can you grow in the shade? Well, if your plants is in a container, I've noticed they can do okay if you have them more shaded. But once it's in the ground, you definitely need as much direct sunlight as you can give them. Can you grow them indoors? Probably not unless you can artificially increase in temperatures around your plant. How hot is enough heat for your plant? I would say 70 degrees consistent temperature day and night should be enough which most people will not have those temperatures indoors. Winter requirements. Well, luckily, if you want to grape, uh, grow your own grapes, you can grow them in most of the US. There are some varieties that will take a lot of cold and there are some varieties that, can, that will take a lot more heat. But generally, most grapes will do well in most of the US. You do not have to protect your grapes in the winter time because this plant is a deciduous plant. It will drop its leaves in the winter and go dormant. During dormancy, they can take a lot of cold. The only problem you may have with some of the varieties that don't do well as well in colder areas, if your soil freezes, that will, may be an issue with some varieties. But generally, most varieties will do fine in colder areas. But there's a little tip that I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give you towards the end of the video if you want to grow grapes in colder areas because you need to know this in order to be able to get fruits. Let's talk about the root system. Well, the root system of grapevines is actually very fibrous and it's also shallow. They don't really go too deep in the ground, so. You shouldn't have any issues planting them close to structures. Talk about the structure of the plant. Well, if you didn't know, grapes are a vine. Yes, they will climb everything. My grapevine, when I first planted it in the ground, was about this size right here. You can see this container, it's tiny, and it was about this size three years ago. And now, Three years later, you can see how big the trunk is, and it actually started to grow in between the panels of my chicken coop. I didn't realize this when I first put it in the ground, otherwise I would have probably planted it maybe another foot away from my chicken coop, so that way it wouldn't have uh, technically destroyed the side wall of my chicken coop. But you can see it has encased the entire chicken coop on the top on the sides, giving them shade, which is definitely needed here in the desert, but also it's growing into my shed up here. I'm gonna have to prune that area up because what's gonna happen, it will grow underneath the roof tiles and that may be an issue because I don't want the vines to actually destroy uh, the roof tiles and the roof decking. So if you're gonna be planting them close to your house, well, keep in mind, you may have to do some pruning. Do not like, let them get over your roof because that's how rats are gonna get on your house, bugs are gonna get in your house. So keep that in mind. Let's talk about pollination. Grapevines are self-pollinating. Meaning they have male and female flowers on the same flower, so you really do not have to do anything. Now there are some varieties out there that do need cross-pollination. If your variety needs cross-pollination, you may have to plant a different variety nearby so that way they can get cross-pollinated. But I can tell you most of the varieties that we sell here at the nursery are self-pollinating and only one vine will give you plenty of fruits. 
This is the only vine that we have here planted at the property. And as you can see, we have tons of grapes everywhere. They're all over on the sides. And also, soon enough, they're gonna be hanging down my chicken coop. So only one vine should be enough for you to get fruits if that's what you're after. Let's talk about flowering and fruiting. So, grapes, in general, I'm gonna flower early spring. And the fruits, normally, from the time they flower to the time they are ready for picking, usually takes a few months. So this one here, flower in March. Right now it's May, it's been two months, and you can see the grapes are just starting to ripen. They probably need another six to eight weeks before I can fully pick them. Depending on the temperatures, well, that will dictate how fast that usually happens. But normally, it will take a few months for your grapes to fully ripen. Now, here is the tip that I have to give you um, about flowering. Even though grape vines take cold temperatures, your flowers will not. So if your grape vine flowers early in the season and you get a late freeze, most of your flowers will get frost damage and you just, just like that, you will lose your entire crop for the year. Thankfully, this one right here, um, somehow this area is stay a little warmer than the rest of my yard. So it did not really get hit by hard frost this year, even though we did have a late frost this year. But thankfully this area, because of all the trees that I have around, it stayed a little warmer enough to keep the frost away. So that's the only reason why my grapes actually fully flowered and the flowers got pollinated without getting frost damage. Another thing about fruiting is most of your flowers will actually grow or flower on the new growth. You can see this is the new growth from this year. And you can see that's where most of the actual grapes are on. So as your grapevine gets older, you're going to have to prune a little bit to encourage growth. Because the older growth will not have any flowers. What will have flowers is going to be your new growth right here. When you first plant your grapevine in the ground, you do not have to worry about pruning. My recommendation is to let it grow and once your plant maybe gets this big right here, then you can go ahead and every winter when it goes dormant, you can prune it a little bit to encourage new growth when the plant wakes up. Watering. If your plant's in a container like this one right here, I can tell you they will get root bound extremely fast. So it's just very important for you to keep them watered. My recommendation, if, if your plant came in a tree pot like this one right here, do not let them go dry, especially if you live in an area where it gets extremely hot, like here in the desert. So in containers, generally, regardless of the size container you plant this in, you wanna follow the 50% rule. And that is, wait until 50% of your plant is dry, and however often that happens, that's how often you water your plant. These guys right here, they are extremely root bound. You can see the roots are completely full. You can see the container here is full of roots. As your plants become root bound, what's going to happen is they will dry even faster. So you cannot let them dry. If your plant looks like this in a container, my recommendation is to keep it wet rather than to let it dry. If this plant here goes dry in full sun in my area, one single afternoon is enough to kill this plant. So it's always best to keep them wet rather than to let, it, let them dry. Now, if your plant's in the ground, you just saw what the roots look like. So you don't really have to water that long. This one right here has a four gallon an hour meter. So that means in one hour, it puts out four gallons. Now, how long, how often to water will depend on how grown your plant is. This one has been in the ground for about three years. So when I run this water right here, just because I have, I have other plants on the same uh, watering uh, area, this one specifically gets water for six hours. So it gets about 24 gallons of water. And my plant is growing 
it's fruiting and uh, so for me three years time it seems to be doing okay the key with watering plants in the ground especially shallow rooted plants is just water until you think the ground is wet one to two feet below and then let it dry and then water again so this one gets water for about six hours right now every four days my plants growing and you can see I think I watered yesterday you can see my soil it's still wetting here but I give it another two days it will probably dry about a foot the key is to let it dry a little bit in between watering but even if you keep it wet it will take months to years to kill your plants from overwatering and that would only happen if your soil did not drain the water so do not stress about too much about overwatering your grapevine let's talk about fertilization in containers it's very easy to do this plants right here we need to out pot in five gallon containers so as soon as we out pot them we'll fertilize them and they'll be good to go for the entire year in containers we use osmo code slow release fertilizer it works for us we have been using it for many years and that is what we use on all our plants regardless of what they are flowers fruits shade trees doesn't matter it works on all of them and the numbers are irrelevant do not buy into the gardening myth where you need specific fertilizers for all your plants in the ground it's even easier i don't even do anything anymore in the ground as soon as you water and you keep watering that area life will come will come to the area you will get roly polies you can see i got a roly poly right there so see right there is a roly poly and i got ants in there and i got all kinds of life it's like the soil moves as i start digging it and i can tell you i have not put anything in here in several years but that life in the soil is what actually feeds your plant because they eat the organic matter in the ground then they poop and when their poop is small enough then that is what your plant is going to eat so if you have your plant in the ground always concentrate on the water first and if you really want to put something in the ground organic matter you can't go wrong compost any type of poop, poop you can just lay it on the surface and then just water it in but if you're lazy like me and all you do is water as long as you have your water down that is technically all you need can you grow grape vines in containers temporarily yes for a little while yes you can and they will actually fruit in containers too now the problem you're gonna have in containers is the problem that I have here I got two grape vines right here that I neglected for the past two years I think and the problem is they are fully root bound in these containers and you can tell a lot of my vine, um, my uh, vine over here died off because they went dry on me but the problem is your grape vines they're gonna grow so fast that it's very hard to keep them in containers long term so my recommendation for you is if you want to keep your vines in containers you can go ahead and do them temporarily but once you plant this root vine you need to up potting immediately do not keep them in the same container because it's very hard to water them once they become root bound and if you get to a size container like this one right here this is a 15 gallon this is a big container right here and this grapevine right here is completely root bound and it's dried on me my canopy has died back as you guys can see so if you don't want to go any bigger you got two choices one you can put it in the ground and let your plant grow naturally or if you don't want to up pot it into an even bigger container you can wait until your plant goes dormant in the winter time and then you can prune the canopy back about 25 to 50 percent and then you can take your plant out of the container and you can cut the root ball like an inch all the way around and on the bottom and repot it into the same container you will need to do that every single year to keep your plant in the same container but you will not be able to keep your plant indefinitely in a container without doing some type of maintenance and that brings us to my personal growing tips once you put your grapevine in the ground it will take at least a year for your plant to fully root itself in the ground until then your grapes are not gonna grow so if you just put your grapevine in the ground and it's not growing after three and a half days it's being in the ground well that is normal it's not gonna grow until it's fully rooted in the ground now let's say you forget to water your your, uh, your grapevine well guess what instead of taking a year to root itself in the ground now it's gonna take a year and a half or even two years and guess what until then your grapevine is not going to grow regardless of what fertilizer or 
any other magical juice you want to put in the soil. It's not going to grow if it's not fully rooted in the ground. That also applies for container plants. If you just apart your plant, it's not going to grow until it's fully rooted in the neo container. That happens a lot faster in the container than it does in the ground. Another personal tip is, even though grapevines take a lot of cold, if they flower early and you get a late freeze and your flowers get hit by frost, you just lost your fruits, just like that. So every year you are, the, you are at the mercy of the weather. If you get a late freeze, you're screwed. If you don't, you're good. So every year for me, it's different. This year I got tons of grapes, tons of grapes. Last year I barely had any because last year this entire area over here was more exposed. So it actually got hit by frost. And uh, normally I always get a late frost because I'm in the desert. And lastly, the only issue that I personally have with grapevines is the skeletonizer moth. Now this moth is black, it looks like an elongated fly, and you will see them flying around your grapevines. And what they do is they lay eggs on the leaves and then the eggs hatch and they look like car caterpillars and they will suck the juice out of your foliage and your leaves are gonna look like this. Now is that a problem? Well, okay, look, there's some uh, caterpillars right there. Technically, it's not really a, really a problem. It's not gonna kill your plant. But the problem you're gonna have though is if you have an infestation, they can decimate your entire canopy. And if you have grapes and you have extreme temperatures like I do here in the desert, your grapes, the fruits themselves will get sunburned as they're ripening in the middle of the summer. And you will lose your grapes because they have no shade. So every year is different. This year I have a little bit of damage right here. You can see by most of my canopy. It's fine. Just a few areas got hit by the caterpillar, but in general, it's fine. About two years ago though, it was really bad. The entire canopy got hit by the skeletonizer moth and the caterpillars were just completely decimating it. Like I said, they're not gonna kill your plant. They will only cause cosmetic damage. But obviously, if you live in area with extreme temperatures, your vines are gonna sunburn when the temperatures reach 110, 120 degrees. And obviously, if your grapes get hit by direct sunlight, the skin on, on the grapes themselves is very thin, so they will sunburn very easily. Is there any way to actually control that, uh, that moth? Technically, no. You can use pesticides, but remember, your plant will eat that, and then it will transfer it to your fruits, and then that will go into your body. So if you're into chemicals and eating chemicals, go ahead and use that. Now, if you wanna go the organic way, well, once you see that moth flying around your plant, you need to get some soapy water and then start spraying your plant every single day every single day to prevent those caterpillars from hatching and destroying your canopy but to be honest we don't do anything here we just let let nature do its thing and every year it's a little different this year is good last year was nah, not so okay because remember we got late frost last year and the year before that the entire canopy got decimated by the skeletonizer moth so anyways guys that's it everything that you need to know in order to successfully grow your grapevine I just told you. If you have any questions or any other any other thing that I did not mention in this video, just go ahead and comment below. I'll try to answer them for you. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to like them so more people can know what through gardening is about. As always, don't forget to subscribe because like I said before, over 90% of you watching are not even subscribed to the channel. And as always, I will see you next time.